this week and typically like over the summer we did release a video every week um, but we've been super busy with this balloon project trying to meet that scheduled launch date that we haven't been able to release as much content as usual so sorry about that but next year we should be able to continue with our usual schedule of a KSP video every week and uh, just a regular video maybe every week or so so anyways Today we are going to show you our third balloon update and our final balloon update before the launch. So let's jump right in. So before we get into some other updates, let's quickly just go over some quick things that we have gotten over the past few weeks. So this right here is the Insta 361R. Um, this is going to be our main video capturing device on our weather balloon. Um, it's a 360 cam, that's what's super special about it. So what it does is it has two 180 degree lenses on either side of the camera and then it will record that and stitch it together which means that we'll have like a 360 view that you'll be able to see in an entire bubble around this um, 360 camera. Um, so we're going to be releasing two videos after the launch. Um, one's just going to be an unedited version of the whole flight just from the 360 camera. You'll be able to press these arrows and look all around um, the weather balloon payload and all around and see the earth. Or if you have VR, you can put VR and see all around like that. Um, if we recover this thing. And speaking of recovery, we're going to be using this spot GPS for the recovery. What this does is it'll send you a text message of the location every 10 minutes. Um, it's not the most reliable way to um, track weather balloons. That would be an APRS radio which you you can hook up to an Arduino but to do that you need to get a ham radio license and that means you have to study for a test real quick and get this license um, and we really didn't have the time to do that since our launch is just a couple of days away so we just want something quick and somewhat reliable which is a spot so this right here is a spot personal tracker um, we found that one to be the best out of the two we have we also have a spot trace and that didn't actually work as well. So the spot personal tracker is actually better for this flight. It's an older version. I don't know if they sell them anymore. They might sell them at REI, but yeah. So anyways, let's get into all the updates and what we've added to our payload bay. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, weather balloon thing. So right here, we got the chute release. This thing will release this 36 inch parachute at around a thousand feet or any predetermined altitude that we set. This will let us, um, this will allow us the balloon and the payload to uh, land faster that way we don't have to drive as much. This cable goes along the whole thing to keep this thing charged because if this thing runs out of battery um, and the chute doesn't open this thing will land at super fast speeds and we don't want that. Um, disclaimer here it does have a drogue chute that opens immediately after the balloon pops, so it won't be going super fast when the chute opens. And then this is just the cable that goes up to the chute release. So let's open this thing up. So a few changes here. You may be wondering where the point and shoot went. The point and shoot camera, um, it did have a record limit and we did find a way around that, but the only way we could do that was um, have it at record at 30 frames per second but we really wanted it at 60 frames per second so we just ditched it because it was heavy and yeah so anyways um we got underneath this blue 3d printed top right here that i just sloppily hot glued on we just have a ton of cables because there's a total of uh four things that need to be charged and um and we have these two lights right here um which will give us which are just status indicators this button right here um, it just saves all the data on the SD card, whatnot. So yeah, and then we just got the high altitude data logger. Uh, you should probably know all about that. And we did live stream the build for that. So if you want to check that out, there's a card in the upper right hand corner. On the sides, of course, we got the hand warmers to keep everything nice and warm. And underneath this blue box, there's also the altimeter that is also wired to the Arduino. Um, so underneath, there's a um, Adafruit MPRLS. And there's a plastic tube that goes through here and out the corner of this um, payload bay. It actually goes onto this long beam. You can maybe kind of see it right here. And then this will allow the pressure to be read by the MPRLS while it's actually inside here because there may be some pressure differences. Along with that outside here, we did add this right here. It's a drone receiver 
and we can just plug it right in at the time of the launch and that's just a backup GPS. We'll get more into that later. Anyways, this is just the science payload. This is what it's gonna look like on the launch. And then along with that, on the side here, sorry, I'm kind of working one-handed and there's ropes all over, ugh. On the side here, we're got, we can mount the, um, the Insta360-1R just like that. And then that's gonna be recording up and down, but it's a 360 camera, so it doesn't really matter. So then let's move on to the second payload bay that holds the GPS. So inside this box, we have the GPS, and this is also gonna hold all the quotes. Um, it looks really bad right now, I'm really sorry. I might make it look better, but making it look better takes up a lot of time, so I might just launch it like this. Because the other payload looks really nice, but this one is just plain. But anyways, um, you could kind of barely see that. Sorry for all these cords that are going all over, but it's ready for launch. But anyways, um, inside here, you can see the spot GPS on this blue mount thing. And what that is, it is a gimbal. And you can see whenever I move it, it's always pointing upright. And the reason being is because spot GPS's, they don't actually really work. Um, they don't work when they're upside down or if they're like sideways, which is why they're known to be sometimes unreliable. So I was able to 3D print this gimbal here. And even if this thing is upside down or sideways, the spot will always be pointing up, um, which means that um, no matter how this thing lands, we're always gonna get a signal. Um, and you might be wondering why do you put this inside here? Um, it gets down to negative 40 degrees Celsius, which is also negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, by the way, um, up in those high altitudes. So um, we wanna make sure this thing stays super warm. Um, we did do a couple of tests to see if it was able to transmit inside this box. It was able to transmit perfectly fine. We put like the other payload box on top and it still worked perfectly. So um, everything should work really fine and we did do a lot of tests on this. So one thing I forgot to mention before, our temperature um, readings are gonna be kinda off at, at around 80,000 feet or so because the rays from the sun actually mess up the temperature sensor, so it's gonna be a bit hotter than it actually is. There's a quick note right there. But anyways, let's get back into it. All right, so um, real quick before we go over some more updates, just wanted to say if you guys want to send your name to the Edge of Space along with a quote, you can fill out the form below. In that, in that form, you'll be able to fill out your name, which is optional, you don't have to put that, um, a quote, and then um, other details such as your credit card number and your social st security number. That way we can all get that and put a Just kidding. That form does not ask you for your credit card number or your social security number. On that form, all you need to fill out is your name, which is optional, a quote, and your country where you're from, and that's also optional as well, and some other just minor details. You can check that out in the description below. But anyways, um, let's get into some more updates and fun stuff. So, um, we're planning to launch this thing next Monday, which will be December 21st, 2020. Um, but that really depends on the weather and how um, things are looking on our project. But this December 21st looks really good because the weather looks really nice, the wind speeds are low, et cetera, et cetera. So that's our launch date, and that could always change. We might have to go into the week after that. But anyways, if you wanna see all the progress live, we're gonna be posting all the updates of our launch um, like almost immediately on our Facebook page and our Discord, um, our Discord update channel on the Advanced Rocketry Discord server. So the, both of those links are down in the description if you wanna follow us live and see how things are going. But anyways, let's go over some launch procedures that we're going to be doing. So we're gonna probably be doing this early morning because that's typically when the winds are lower and that way we have more time in the afternoon to go over things and if we lose it, that way we have more time to look for this thing. So we're probably gonna head out to the launch site that day, um, set up a nice big tarp, um, have the parachute or have everything prepped up, fill up the balloon and um, send it off and then we're gonna also make sure that we test everything and make sure everything is working well and also that we turn on everything because we don't wanna go five, four, three, two, one, yay! And then like two minutes later, we don't want someone going, oh dang, I forgot to turn on the GPS. Cause that'd be really bad. So we're gonna take it slow, make sure everything's on, test everything before the flight. And then after it goes off, we're gonna immediately start following it using those 10 minute um, 
10 minute updates from the spot GPS and then kind of see where it's going to land, head out there and then um, recover the thing if the spot works. Hopefully we recover this thing because if we don't, that would really, really suck. But we do have a backup kind of GPS system. It's not really GPS. If um, the very unlikely chance that the spot doesn't work, um, we can use one of those online predictors where it predicts your weather balloon's path and then use the drone parts on the balloon payload. Um, we made something out of drone parts and then we can, we'll maybe be able to find it. Um, if you're wondering on the accuracy of those website weather balloon flight predictors, um, there's a guy that I know, he doesn't really know me, but he did lose his weather balloon payload, which actually also had a very expensive DSLR on it, and he lost it because the GPS just went kabonk. So he was actually able to use that predictor and some math to find out where the payload went, and he also got some really cool footage from that. So we're, we're hoping that the spot works, but if not, we also have a chance to recover it using the predictor and the drone parts, whatnot. But anyways, after we get all the stuff, we're gonna get all the data, make graphs, do all that stuff, and then probably the, the day after, we're probably gonna release all the unedited footage, and then probably like a week or two after, we're gonna make our next video. But anyways, yeah, that's about it for updates this week. Sorry this video was a bit shorter and lower quality because we're really busy. We're trying to get everything ramped up and ready to go. So, um, yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. If you en enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and comment below if you have any questions or suggestions, um, anything like that. Also, make sure to subscribe for more um, updates like this and follow us on Facebook. Check out our Patreon if you want to go above and beyond and support us that way. But... Um, wish us luck, and other than that, have a great day.